even though this patch came a little bit later, we're still here giving you guys the tier list just about on time. Some things are still a little bit shaky, but we can give a pretty good idea of how this patch has gone. And well, also how it's still going, because it's not going away anytime soon. We're not even halfway done. So make sure you smash the like button harder than you smash those noob teams you're up against. And don't forget to destroy the sub button like Riot has destroyed my MMR, and let's jump right in. And before I get triggered by my feeding teammates, because yes, even I have feeding teammates, let me give you the solution to all of your problems in the mid lane. You guys need to play Annie. Is your bot lane combined 0 and 14? Are you up against the most annoying team you have ever played against in your life? Well, I have the solution for you. Call now at the number you see below to subscribe to the Annie hotline. That is 1-800-TIBBERS, 1-800-T-I-B-B-E-R-S, and you will have LP flowing your way. There's a reason why she is the only champion in the broken tier in the mid lane, and seriously, she is the only one deserving of that role right now. She has a ton of potential, and there's even some room for her to grow, with people experimenting with what rune builds complement the item build of Rylai's Leonji's rushing the best. Just remember that if you do actually eventually get converted to the Church of Annie, that you take my business card, because there's a little referral system, and you're gonna need that later on. And now that you're set, let's move into the S tier highlight. And honestly, I could roll some dice and pick any champion here, and all of them are in a really good spot, and if they get even buffed just a tiny bit, they'd be broken. But while we're here, we may as well cover the most sort of unique champion that's there, so let's talk about Galio for a little bit. He is really good against AP Assassins, both because he is tanky, and he also prevents them from being able to kill people on his team, now that his ultimate applies his passive magic shield to allies within his ultimate. And I don't know about you guys, it's hard to count sometimes, but I could see two people who don't actually do magic damage in S tier and above. And speaking of large AoE damage, I think we already covered somebody who does exactly that in the magic damage form. Of course, he's good for other reasons too, but that's besides the point. Stepping down now into A tier, let's highlight a champion who you might not expect to be there, and actually who just recently moved up. Velkaz is doing pretty well right now, even though he's very difficult, and this is across most elos. It's pretty unusual for somebody to be doing well at all ranks and in high skill ranks, and I guess if that's the case, then they're probably pretty well balanced, maybe? The other option is that they're really overtuned and also somewhat easy, so they're just broken no matter where they're played. But on Velkaz, that doesn't seem like it would be the case since he so heavily relies on positioning and properly comboing his abilities together. If you play Velkaz or you've seen him played in your games recently, let us know what you feel about him because he seems to be statistically doing really well, but sometimes things might not tell the whole story. B tier is where things start hitting the middle of the pack and really start to get average or even below average, barely. Here we're gonna highlight Renekton as he's somebody who we just moved into the B tier, down from A tier. And he seems to be getting played a lot less, and his win rate is actually now, for the first time in quite some time, worse than it is in the top lane, and that's kind of worrying. He's probably just phasing out of existence in the mid lane entirely, and solely exists as a sort of counter picky style champion that mostly only gets played in high elo. So now let's draw the attention away from Renekton, and towards Lux, who he recently moved up into the B tier, and she's actually looking mighty fine right now. Who knew that buffing a champion CC could have such a dramatic impact, as last patch, she was not doing well at all. She's one of the few champions who got an actual legitimate buff that has seriously changed her performance, and that applies to support as well, so you'll see that later. Comparing Lux in previous patches to patches now, it's pretty clear that she isn't quite done yet improving on this patch in terms of her performance. And so we wouldn't be surprised to see her actually end up performing at the very end like something more worthy of A tier, and of course, we'll adjust that moving forward. But if she actually is so good that she's performing like an S tier champion, that's actually pretty surprising considering that the change was only relatively minor in terms of how the mechanic of E worked. Moving into C tier, we have a lot of mid laners who are either extremely hard to play or pretty niche. Here we're going to highlight Silas, as if you actually do manage to get even just a slight lead or stay even in your lane, Silas can become very oppressive very quickly. It's his ability to run out of mana very fast, and that really just cripples him completely, alongside his relative mechanical intensity that makes it really rough for him to shine in lower ranks. But if you pull him off, he can be really impressive. But you know what isn't impressive? The Akali win rate. Of course, what, what did you think I was going to say? This champion 
is such a problem for Riot Games to balance, and they seem to be kinda okay with leaving some champions in the dumpster for most players because they're really good in pro play, and if that's what it is, I guess that's what it is, but we're gonna make fun of it every single time because it really doesn't get old. 200 plus years isn't scraping Akali out of D tier anytime soon. That's all I can say. But you know what can scrape your mechanics and macro out of D tier and get you where you need to be to start winning? Our website GameLeap.com. Oh, I'm sorry, what's that? You think your mechanics are A tier and your macro is really good B tier? Okay, fair enough. But what if I told you that all of our videos were done by challenger level players? And I mean, hey, those guys are broken tier in their micro and their macro. So if you wanted to learn and get better, that's exactly where you should go. You could be looking for anything from champion guides all the way up to the very broad generic skills that you need to practice and we've got everything there for you. But now that your climb to gold is well underway and going pretty smoothly for those end of season rewards, let's move on up to the top lane and talk about the broken tier highlight. Here is where things got kind of tough. Even though not much has changed in the top lane, and th that's definitely true, they didn't really target top lane with many changes, there was still quite a bit of performance shifts around in the top lane, but one thing that stayed the same was that Singed and Urgot were by far the best top laners, and Urgot actually closed the gap to Singed, almost overtaking him. But Urgot is played by a lot more players compared to Singed, and so considering he's that close within like 0.2%, that's really impressive and definitely warrants them both as being broken tier highlights. If you're looking for the free LP, look no further. But now as we move into S tier, we want to talk about Volibear for a moment. Because we don't have all the statistics, right? Riot does have a lot of things that we can look at and there's plenty of websites that do an amazing job. But let's face it, they're never going to do as amazing of a job as what Riot has available to them. And from what we can tell with the information they've been dropping around on different social media, it seems like they're looking at Volibear's performance in terms of days over the patch, and it seems like he's doing just fine according to their metrics as to how champions have done in the past when they've been released or reworked. They also do say that they will buff him if he starts to fall below the mark, so they have no intention of letting this man be a poor performer for too long if that's actually the case. Looking at what we have available to us and saying, oh, Volibear has a 40% win ratio so far on the patch is a bit misleading because people are constantly learning as they're playing him. And if your first like 40 to 50 or who knows, maybe even more games are just you absolutely turbo inting, that's going to hurt the statistics quite a bit more than whatever games you win after the fact. Personally, my call, and not looking at anything else because it can be very misleading and it's totally different from what Riot is looking at, would be to put Volibear somewhere between S and A tier, but we're leaving him out entirely because we really have nothing to go off of. If anybody tells you like point blank period Volibear is S tier, A tier, or whatever tier they put him in, they're just wrong at this point and you shouldn't listen to them. What's very clear is that Riot totally intends for him to be doing well and they're gonna continually buff him until he's at that point. The same exact thing that they've done with Fiddlesticks and every other champion that they've reworked or released. But enough about the massive bear electric spirit thingy, let's actually get back into the list. Our S tier highlight is going to be Quinn, as she's been doing surprisingly well and even though she can be hard as she's a very squishy ranged top laner who can be hard to play, she's doing well in low elo too. It's kind of strange at first because she doesn't seem to do well into other champions that are around her level for the most part, but it seems like she's actually having no problems winning games despite those champions also being strong. Now let's jump down to the A tier and highlight Olaf, as he's a champion who is very snowball-y. Once he gets ahead, he's very hard to do anything against because normally he just chops your head off with his axe. And he also does do well into several of the champions who are in a higher tier than him on this list. Still though, there's more to just winning a matchup than simply killing your opponent, and that's where things get tricky. Olaf has to manage the wave properly, make sure he isn't pushing it super hard by spamming Qs all over the place, making sure he isn't running out of mana, and it can be a lot harder and therefore probably is the reason why he's not doing as hot as everybody else. The better you are though, the better he becomes, as once you start reaching Platinum and above, he really starts to spike and is actually a top 5 top laner right now in this moment. Still though, other things are easier to play, and if you don't have games on him, he might not be worth picking up, that's entirely up to you. Now B tier is the middle of the pack. This is where things start to get pretty messy and there's a lot of people in it, so let's just highlight Aatrox, as he is one of the most difficult champions to play because he's so different from everybody else. Him, Gangplank, Jax, and other champions are all similar levels of difficulty and uniqueness in some key way. 
Aatrox though, if you manage to play him well, can really become almost unstoppable. He wins almost every 1v1, and the ones where he would lose requires your opponent to actually have quite a bit of skill. Of course, this is in a solo queue setting, it gets a lot more complicated if you start throwing multiple competent players together who are communicating. As a champion who spikes really hard with any point of cooldown reduction they get and spikes pretty hard at level 6, Aatrox is a convincing pick, but again, you gotta put a lot of work in in order to get to that point. Now as we drop into C and D tier, it's pretty dry down here. Very few people actually deserve being ranked this low, but if we had to highlight somebody, we would highlight Kale. As she's a champion who, once you hit 3 items, really becomes a hyper carry. Legitimately, if she has even just 2 seconds of free time in a teamfight, and you can make 2 seconds for yourself if you really had to, she can just obliterate multiple people on the enemy team. She melts through squishies, she melts through tanks, and at that point, you are so convincingly strong that you can almost 1v5. Even if your teammates are just meatbags falling in front of you and dying over and over again, that can be enough for a Kale to completely win the game. It's just a matter of getting to those three items that's a lot more complicated than it might seem. Lastly, in D tier, it's the same as the mid lane. Akali's awful, there's no reason to mention Ryze, it's just sadness. And honestly, I couldn't think of a solution, I don't think very many people could. Hopefully though, the people who are paid to do that come up with something to save these champions. Because honestly, at this point, they're just gonna fade away into non-existence. I just noticed, looking at the stats websites that I'm looking at, Ryze isn't even on there in the top lane, because there's so few games. But that means that we've wrapped up the top lane, and now it's time to move on to the Bush Boys. Now, in the jungle, things have gotten a little bit sticky, so to speak. You see, Riot, for some reason, decided that Fiddlesticks, one of the best performing junglers across all elos, needed a buff. And when that happens, usually other bad things also happen. And honestly, just looking at the numbers every single time, the win rate in Platinum Plus just makes me sick. We adjust the tier list, obviously, because we want to be addressing people in Platinum and below us, that's the majority of people who play League. But still, deviating from that, for just a moment, you can look at the other top champions and go, okay, it's Singed, he's got like 2% of players picking him, it's Kog'Maw, he's got less than 2% or whatever, Fiddlesticks is over 8%. What? Most champions who have that disgusting of a win rate have very low play rates because they have a small dedicated player base that are actually very good at them. But now with a champion rework that's like a month old at nearly a 9% pick rate, that is a disgusting, unacceptable, over 53% win rate that should never happen. Man, I feel like I get too attached to this stuff sometimes, you know? But well, let's move off the broken tier, because Fiddlesticks is just up there in his own class, and let's go down to S tier. Here we're gonna highlight Kane, as he is a very flexible and strong champion that recently got buffed. And put those three together, or however many, I can't count, and you've got something that's very hard to deal with. Because a Kane, even if he takes the wrong runes, can still adapt to a game based on his item build even if it's not as effective if Shadow Assassin, Blue Cane, is better than Red Cane in a given game, he can still do it. And if you could adapt to any situation, and you're also really strong if the situations line up, and you identify them correctly in Champ Select, how do you play around them? H how do you even know in the first place, right? You need to have a really good understanding of Kane to be able to play against him, and that makes it a lot harder to deal with. Even if you're only going to be playing against Kane because you're not really interested in him, I would at least put some games on him so that you have a better understanding of how he works and learn a little bit about what he wants to do against different team comps. That can help you a ton in terms of how you plan and fight around the enemy team. And unfortunately, for the most part, the last changes to our tier list here for the jungle specifically are in A tier. There's only a few champions that move around into it from where they were last time, and we're gonna highlight one of them, and that's gonna be Hecarim, as he did just get buffed on this patch. The extra damage on his Q ramps up really fast, because the cooldown gets very low when you're fighting, and that also affects jungle camps as well. So having a faster clear, having a better 1v1, better 2v2, better fighting in general is always very nice, and seeing Hecarim rise in win rate because of that isn't much of a surprise. While the pony isn't quite stomping the competition, he's still doing pretty well. Now from here, like I said, things are kind of stale because they're effectively the same as last patch, but we're going to have some different highlights here nonetheless. 
The upper ends of things shifting around does mean that certain champions in the lower tiers will be easier to play even if the performance is still roughly the same. We're gonna highlight Jarvan here, not because he's particularly good, but he's actually particularly bad. If you look at the upper ends of the tier list, you'll notice that a lot of people are actually pretty good when they're getting dove on. And they're also really good if the enemy team happens to not be able to move out of a particular shape that gets formed in the ground by Jarvan. While he definitely still can be good and definitely has his place, you gotta be careful because you can really mess your team up by making a particularly bad play. And trust me, it's not that hard to mess up a play on Jarvan. In C tier, we're gonna highlight Nocturne, as many people who are very strong right now do have high range. And so if you play Nocturne, he's not bad because he can stifle other people simply by pressing R. Now, is that enough to win the game? Well, clearly most of the time, no. However, if you're playing in a coordinated team environment for some reason, or you might even just have a duo that you can camp with your ultimate, you can actually make a pretty good performance with this guy. Now, right before we get into D tier, those of you who might have had keen eyes may have noticed that Volibear also isn't in here, and that's because the same rules from top lane also apply. But for D tier, we're still gonna highlight Yorick, because Riot Games. And we're gonna get a nice reel and close here and make this really clear. What is the reason for buffing a champion in the jungle if you aren't actually gonna try and make them usable? No answer? Okay, that, that's okay. You can take your time and we'll come back to it another day. But with that, that's the jungle tier list. The bush boys are now wrapped up, so let's move on into the bot lane and start talking about AD carries. So once again, we will address the topic of mage bot laners, and we can actually say this time, we have stats for at least one of them, but really not good ones. People are still going to need time to start picking up the new champions, or really just the champions in general in the particular role, as things do change from a 1v1 in the mid lane or top lane to the 2v2 in the bottom lane. We'll report things as we see them, but we're just going to leave them sprinkled in even if they aren't statistically relevant yet, because that's roughly where they should end up based on how they're doing elsewhere. For Broken Tier though, I can actually finally say that somebody has beaten Yasuo in terms of bot lane performance. Now, while I can't quite kick him out of the Broken Tier for once, still, it's worth mentioning that Kog'Maw is actually quite a bit far ahead in terms of performance compared to Yasuo, with a similar pick rate, and that's pretty impressive given that Yasuo has held this for I can't even remember how many patches. Now granted, Yasuo has a 40% ban rate and Kog'Maw's is uh, somewhere around 0.4, it's still pretty good. Kog'Maw's recent rise is definitely due to support pools, and I have mentioned this before, but we're really starting to see the snowball -y effects of it now, where a lot of the hyper carry style AD carries who really benefit from enchanter supports and supports who can enable them are starting to take off and really separate themselves from everybody else. When you actually have time to hit things as an AD carry, it feels absolutely magnificent. Now, unfortunately, kind of like the jungle tier list, the AD carries also didn't move around too much, and that's because, let's face it, not many of them were changed, or well, they weren't changed in a way that would separate them from other AD carries, they were just made stronger in general because everybody received roughly the same buffs. And even the people who got unique changes Tristana, Lucian, Callista, and Vayne actually still didn't really go anywhere. For S tier, because of that, we are going to highlight Vayne, as she is a hyper carry style champion who benefits from the supports that we mentioned earlier, and she's got that percentage health damage, much like Kogma. Now, she isn't quite performing to that level, and it makes sense, she's a lot harder to play than Kogma, and her skill cap definitely has an impact on how well she's performing. If you manage to be an actually good Vayne player though, you're gonna notice that she feels pretty good right now. Now, despite her being good, other champions can bully her out of lane, and some of those are in the A tier, and we'll highlight one of them now, and that's Draven. Draven's early game damage is very strong, and if he has a support to protect him and give him space, he can really dish out a lot of damage. A Draven plus a Janna might not seem too great, but if the Janna is actually playing aggressive and he has other forms of engage on his team, he can have a lot of room and time to just destroy people. And Janna is a champion who addresses one of his weaknesses, which is getting dove on and then absolutely destroyed. I mean, we literally saw that in one of Riot's cinematics, a Rengar just tore up a Draven. B tier is where we see our first movement, and that's Kalista moving up into the B tier. And her buffs did actually have an impact on her in the bot lane, 
and not in the solo lane, which is exactly what we predicted and was actually a good change by Riot. They changed her W so that it does more damage earlier on in the game, and that extra burst that happens consistently every 10 seconds or so is very strong. It can also happen a lot if you have a ranged support, say the same support I used before as an example, Janna, who likes to play by constantly harassing her opponents. For C tier, we'll highlight the champion that got a unique change in Lucian. It appears as though him getting that buff, which is pretty significant, did almost nothing to his performance. In fact, he's gone down from what he was in the past and he was pretty steady before. This might be because of the generic broad AD carry changes manifesting as him not being able to snowball as hard, but there's definitely something else going on there and I, I can smell it but I don't quite know what it is. And lastly in the AD carry tier list, there's that one champion still there <laughs> guys, did you really think that what Riot did to her was gonna take her out of there? Oh no. No, no hope for her. Looking at it, she got about a, you know, 0.3% increase in terms of her overall performance and win rate with relatively similar pick rates and ban rates, although it definitely has gone up, that's for sure. Her difficulty plus her relatively poor performance just puts her at the bottom. But now we're done with AD, so now it's time to move on to support. And here's where things didn't really change too much. And by too much, I mean I moved five things around after thinking about it for about an hour and a half, maybe even longer. There was a lot of, eh, I don't know, going on there. But I mean, really, if Riot thinks that a 20 damage nerf to Janna is going to be what takes her from the best support in the game to not the second best support in the game, then I don't really know what they expected to happen. Now, obviously, that's a broad statement, but there is also a broad reason as to why Riot would do that. They're making 80 carry changes across the board and changes to the itemizations, so they were probably trying to go light on the support stuff to make sure they weren't overtuning any sort of support or undertuning them. Fair enough, but still, with Janna being moved slightly downwards, Tarek is the best support right now. He is our Broken Seer highlight and he is standing there by himself. He is the only support to be above 52% in lower and middle elos alike. With that kind of blanket success on a champion who is not simple and also not super easy to play, something's going on there. Now, is it Conqueror Tarek with Teleport Exhaust? I don't think so, but I'm technically not saying that's not the reason either. Really though, multiple shields, movement speed, a stun, healing, good damage, invulnerability, he's got a lot, and other supports just can't contest. Stepping down into S tier, we're going to highlight Zillion, as he is one of the few champions that we actually moved around here on this list. That's because Zillion actually counters a lot of champions who are meta right now. One, because of his ultimate, and two, because of his extreme slow and mobility that he gives to his team. Sometimes, Cogmoss by Frozen Mallet. But, if you have a Zillion support who just presses the E button on you, or the E button on your enemy, you don't really need that item anymore. We talked about this in our best champions video where the supports are able to make it so that AD carries really don't need to buy certain items that they felt they had to in the past. And that means a lot considering that most AD carry items are pretty expensive except for some of the zeal ones and even then those are still more expensive than most defensive options. The fact that Zillion has a revive, speed up, low cooldown abilities and the chances of getting a stun off is pretty good. A tier is the last place that sees movement, but again, considering that Riot was focusing on bot lane and aren't trying to make things super hard for themselves, that's kinda understandable. But here, we're gonna highlight Shaco, as he's a champion who is currently doing pretty well, but it seems like he falls off very hard the higher in elo you get. And that completely makes sense, people understand how to play around the boxes, they understand to use their sweepers and not just sit on their warding totem the whole game, they might buy pink wards, they might be better at identifying which one is the real clone and which one is not, or well, uh, I mean the real Shaco and not the real Shaco, yeah that makes more sense. Anyways, the point is, they know what they're doing a bit more than other people might. This however can be solved if you are an actual good player. Using creativity, interesting setups, surprising people, manipulating your clones properly, I could go on for a long time, but doing all of those things well is what separates the good Shacos from the great Shacos and also is what's going to get you the LP that you want. He's also pretty good at disengaging, considering that he has multiple slows from his kit to his items that he normally buys, as well as fears from either his ulti explosion or his boxes. And you know what happens when you're doing all that? That's called making space. And while you're making space, your AD carries better be giving them a knuckle sandwich. 
Now in the lower tiers of supports, things were pretty stale. But for B tier, let's highlight Lux, as she was a champion who did get buffed, and while she is doing better in support, it's not really warranting moving her out of the B tier. She is still very much struggling to get above that sort of mid-range mark that many other supports are held at. And actually, a lot of other supports are in that position, and it really makes the bottom of the tiers a lot less filled out. There's really no supports that perform in such a way that you could really describe as below average to fit into the C tier, but Set really cuts it close. And not in a bad way either, it's not like I would have put him in D tier, but he's actually kind of close to moving up to B tier. It's likely still his unorthodox playstyle and mechanics that are holding him back, and if that changes, then we'll move him up in the future. But it's still a step up from where he was in D tier, as he has escaped from what has now become the Tom Kench tier, who is our highlight for D tier. Again, this champion is really mostly only good in coordinated play, whether that be with professionals or a team of your friends who know what they're doing. He's still really hard to execute, and the payoff is present when you play something like Fasting Senna with it, but again, it's still not easy. But with that, we've made it to the end, and that's all of our tier lists for patch 10.11. Don't forget to make yourself broken tier by going and checking out our website, GameLeap.com. We have guides that are all done by challenger level players in order to give you the best information and learning possible. Everything from champion guides, macro guides, lane specific guides, jungle guides, whatever you're looking for, we have something up there for you on our website. We try and put out the best content with challenger level players who are experts in order to give you guys the best edge in learning and winning your games. And if you made it this far, thanks for watching the whole video. This one is a pretty long one. It seems like our tier lists and our best champions video are our most popular and of course we're going to keep bringing them to you guys because that's what you want to see. I'm also interested if you guys think I misplaced anybody in the tier list and while this week is kind of tough because the patch is weird and it's also over a day late, it should still be pretty accurate even towards the end of the patch as it wraps up. Anyways, as always, my name is Ace Windstorm and I will see you all later.